I've released a couple of videos over the last couple of weeks talking about some additional new features added to a very popular plugin called Admin Site Enhancements. These features are added to the Pro version. However, if you want to check out the free version, there's a bunch of options there. But we are going to be talking about Pro features today. So the two key standout features that have been added recently is the ability to create custom post types, taxonomies, and so on, including options pages. Cover that in the video, link in the description. And also the ability to work with forms. Again, I'll link that in the description so you can check it out. This new feature kind of goes hand in hand with those two different functions. This now gives the ability to create front-end form submissions. There are some caveats here. There are some things that really need to be added in to make it truly useful and functional, and hopefully they will be added in. But I'll talk about those as we go through the video. So first of all, the most important thing is you need to understand the kind of syntax that's going to be used to invoke this actual function. I'll leave a link to the documentation down below. Inside there, there's information about how you do it, the different short codes and things like that. I'll touch upon them. I'm not going to come in huge amounts of detail. So once you've installed the pro version of ASE, you're going to have a new entry inside tools and you're going to have enhancements. This is going to give you the ability to turn on and off the various different functions. So there's a couple of things we need to do here. If you want to work with the custom content types, enable that function underneath the content management option. You can expand it and it'll show you any information about it. You're also going to need to come into the utility section. And from there, you have the form builder option, which again, you can expand and you can see there's a range of different options here. Once you've enabled those functions, hit save changes and you should be good to go. Okay, so with that being done, the next thing we need to do is, well, not create any forms. That's one of the cool things about this. We don't actually physically have to create any forms. So how does it work? Let me show you. Let's say we want to create a front-end form that allows people to add new posts. What we need to do is create a new page. Now, I'm going to be using Bricks Builder here to build the pages out, but you can use whatever. It's all done through short codes anyway. So we're going to call this Add New Post, and we'll hit Publish. So I already added in a section of the container. Let's open up our container and just simply add in a short code. And this is now ready to put our short code in. So this is what I'm saying. We need to understand the syntax to be able to say what form, what features it has, what type of post it's going to affect, and those kinds of things, whether it's an insert or an update, whether it's published, draft, those kinds of things. So let's quickly go back to the documentation. And this is the section we want to take a look at, which is the post CF form short codes. You can see there's an example, and then there's all the parameters that we can use underneath, which I would recommend you at least get familiar with these because they're going to mean that you understand what's going on. If we come down, we've got a couple of examples. So let's grab this first example. Let's copy this. Let's head over into our site. Let's paste that short code in. So let me quickly just go through what the short code is doing. You can see we've got the post CF form, which is the kind of function that invokes this in the short code. Then we've got these various different parameters, the type, post content, and post type. So post type, create. You can have create and you can have edit. Create will allow you to create a new post, edit, as its name suggests, will allow you to edit it. You do need to pass over the URL variable to this so it knows exactly what post to edit, and we'll cover that in a moment. Then you've got the post content. You can choose to show or hide this, and basically show says it'll show all the fields that are available to this form function inside your website. Finally, we've got the post type. Now, this is set to album because that's what we copied from the short code. But what goes inside you is either the name of the native post type, for example, post pages and those kinds of things, or if you created a custom post type, for example, maybe projects or books or something like that, that's where you insert the actual post type name inside there. So for this example, we're going to say this is for posts, and that's our short code inserted. So let's just save this and quickly take a preview. And you see there's our title, our content, and our submit button. So you'll notice the first thing I'm going to talk about here is there are a couple of things missing. By default, normal post types will at least have things like the featured image, maybe excerpt if you're using those kinds of functions, and so on. You'll see that we don't have the featured image. We don't have any taxonomies for categories, tags, and so on. These are not included inside this function. So for me, at this point in time, unfortunately, this kind of limits what you can do with it. However, to get around the whole featured image thing, you could easily create your own custom field and allow to upload a file, and then it would sort of be inserted in here. Let me quickly show you. Now, if you're getting value from this video, why not hit that thumbs up button to tell YouTube that you are? Alternatively, if you're not, hit the thumbs down button twice, as that seems to work pretty well too. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button. Why not? It's free. Anyway, let's get back on with the tutorial. We come back into our dashboard and go into settings. You can see I've enabled custom post types, taxonomies, and so on. So if we come into custom field groups, 
you can see we've got a field group already created. Let's add a new one in. We'll call this post extras, hit publish. And let's just add a couple of fields in. So we'll just say custom featured image, for example. See, that'll pre-fill it out. Field type, file or media. Column width, up to you. Media, this is going to be an image. So you can specify any other things you want inside you. And I've got a video showing you how to use this functionality. Check that out in the link there and also in the description down below. Your placement, you can set things up inside there if you want to. So you can say our post type is equal to, and you can say what post type it is. So for this example, we want to be posts. User roles, again, you can set up what you want inside you. I'm not going to worry too much about this. And any settings you may want to include as well. So we we'll pop this into the side. So there's our new field. Let's update this. And we go back now to our posts and open one of our posts up. We now have post extras and we've got a custom featured image field. So you can see that now has been included. So we can add in our own custom images there if we want to. So now by refreshing that form, you can see we now get the custom featured image and I can upload an image from here as well. So that function kind of opens up and bypasses that limitation. So you can see we can add a file from here and select our files and so on. Let's just choose this one as an example, insert into the post. You can see it's there, hit submit, that will add it in. You kind of get the idea how this would work. Now, so we've seen how the basic short code works and how we choose what post and so on. But there are other parameters that we can pass to this as well, which opens up more options. So if we take a look, you can see our type, our post ID, post type, and so on. We've already seen some of these. The type is create or edit. We've set up create to add a new post, but we can change that to edit, which we will take a look at in a moment. Your post ID, again, we will take a look at this. We need to pass that over via the URL to tell it what post to edit, and we'll take a look at a moment. Your post type. As we've already seen, specifies whether this is post or a custom post type or page or whatever it is. And then you've got your post title, your post content, so you can show and hide various different fields that are included inside your form. Post status, you can see this is between published, draft, pending, and private. So by default, it goes into draft status, but we can change that. So all we need to do is copy this, head back into our form short code, and we can pop in that exact information. We'll do equals and we'll do open and close those speech marks. And then we can say what we want. So we'll say pending, for example. So that will now put that post into pending because we override that draft default status. This is how you kind of do it. These are kind of like parameters or switches, whatever you want to kind of call them. If you want to tie in particular field groups, exclude fields, you can do just that. You can also add in capture. You will need to put in your API details for whichever captures are supported, and you can adjust the submit label. So if you don't want the button to say submit, which in a lot of cases makes no sense, you can simply copy that, come back into your short code inside those brackets, pop that in, equals, open and close our speech marks, and we'll say add new post, for example. And see, that updates the button accordingly. Hit save. Now if we take a look at our form on the front end, you can see everything is there. Let's try this out. Let's add an image. Again, we'll grab this one and hit insert that into our post and add new post. So that's now added our post in. And if we go back into our dashboard, there's our new post, number 10, set to pending. And if we come in to edit this, you can see there's our custom featured image. Obviously, we're not going to see a standard featured image because, well, one hasn't been uploaded to it. It's not supported. But you can easily reference this inside your dynamic data and kind of bypass the featured image function anyway. So you can have a workaround there should you want to. And as you can see, it pulls everything in as the sort of standard tiny MCE editor, which pretty much all of these front end form kind of plugins do. OK, so we've seen now how we can easily add in a front end form to add a post. What about editing a post? How would that work? Fundamentally, in the same kind of way. Let's add a new page in and call this edit post. Again, I'm going to edit this with bricks. And like before, I've already created my section container and dropped in the short code element. So let's go back to our documentation. And from here, we've got another sample short code we can grab and modify. So let's grab this one. Let's copy it and take it over. Let's add that short code in and take a quick look at it. So again, we've got the same kind of function here, but we change the create to edit for the type. So this knows this is going to be one we can actually edit the content of. You can see the post ID is using the in underscore URL. So we need to pass that over because it's going to look for that ID for the post inside the URL of our page. So we need that to go over, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Post content show says it's going to show all the fields, but again, if we want to restrict, we can do. And let's get rid of this capture. We don't need that inside here. We haven't got it set up, so let's get rid of it. And there we go. So now that's all set up. So again, we can make those changes if we want to change the button. 
you kind of get the idea. And you see it's pulled in all the relevant fields for us. So let's save this. And now let's create that link that goes over and allows us to edit this. So what I've done here is I've created a simple page. I've inserted a post loop and I've set the basics up to show us our posts. Nothing more than that. We've got a button inside there, but that's not linked to anything yet. So what we need to do is choose the link type. So we're going to set this to be custom URL. And now we need to build out that custom URL. So first things first, we need to make sure we've got the right page that we're referencing, which is the page we just created to edit our posts. So for ease, let's just copy that, head back into our page and drop that in. So we're going to put a forward slash, the link and the forward slash again. And now that's going to take it over to the page. We need to pass over the relevant ID. So to do that, we're going to do a question mark and we're going to do post underscore ID equals and this doesn't matter whether you're using pages, posts, WooCommerce products, whether you're creating custom post types, anything. They all use the post ID to pass over that URL variable for any post. WordPress looks at everything as post types. So whether it's custom or internal, they're all post types. OK, so all we need to do is grab our dynamic data. We're going to click our little lightning bolt and say post ID, as simple as that. Now, unfortunately, I know that when it comes to Elementor, you can't natively do this or not very easily, at least. So you are going to need a third party plugin if you want to do it with that. I believe you can do it with a lot of other tools like generate blocks and so on. OK, so with that being done, let's hit save on here and preview this. And now if we mouse over any of these, we take a look at the bottom. You can see this is post ID 143, post ID 142. 141 and so on. So if we hit edit post, that will take us over is our sample post five it pre fills the data in we haven't created a custom image. So let's just do that. Now we'll pop this one in or some tag Italy, which looks tasty and hit submit. And you see that now updates everything. So if we go back to our page, edit that post again, you can see that image has been uploaded, we can hit remove hit submit. And that's now gone. So it really is that simple. There's nothing more complicated than that about it. But let me just quickly show you if you want to do it with a custom post type, what you need to do. It's very, relatively simple and the same kind of thing going on. But let me just show you anyway. So first of all, we need to make sure that we know exactly what we set up for the slug for our custom post type. I've got one here called project. And as you can see, if we open this up inside the settings and custom post type, even if you're using something else like ACF or whatever, it all works in fundamentally the same way. There's our key or slug, which is project. So for ease, let's just copy that, open up our add post. Let's expand this out and find our short code. And now we need to do is change that post type from post and drop in what we just copied, which is project. And you see now that updates and shows us the different fields that are associated with that custom post type. It is as simple as that. You just tell it what post type you want to reference and it will pull in the fields that it currently supports. Now, speaking of supported fields, if you have things like repeater regions and things like that, that are functions built into the ASE Pro plugin, they will all show up inside you in fundamentally the same way that you see them when you create them and work with them inside the editor itself. So all those things are supported. Like I say, I'm hopeful that we'll see support for the featured image taxonomies and so on native support for that inside you. I think that's absolutely required if you want to do anything more than just the basics of creating everything other than the title and the content we need to have those functions included. But I pass this over to you. What are your thoughts? Are you an ACE Pro user? Is this something you could see yourself using? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.